Hi, I'm Mike Paul, Technical Director of Location Sound, and today we're going to take a detailed look at the new Kantar X3 portable recorder from Aton Digital. After two years of development, the successor to the highly respected X1 and X2 recorders has finally arrived here at Location Sound. While users of the previous recorders will find a lot of similarities in the new model, the X3 represents a giant leap in capabilities over the previous models, and not only that, it represents a refinement of the belief that if you're not willing to make compromises and you're willing to think out of the box a little bit, you can create something that, while unique in appearance, is singular in its intent in providing professional mixers a professional tool to meet the needs of modern production sound. During the development phase of the X3, Aton's engineers spent a lot of time not only talking to production sound mixers, but looking at current and future technologies to determine what should go into the new recorder. And based on what we see here, I think the answer was all of the above. The X3 has up to 54 inputs and 49 outputs, and can record any combination of those inputs to its 24-track recorder with planned sample rates up to 192K based on media speed. The X3's built-in 10-channel mix surface, featuring an updated and extremely smooth version of their unique magnetic faders, allows you to perform a mixdown of up to 10 isolated tracks to a mono or stereo bus, which is also recorded. The magnetic faders can also be configured to control other things, like a line-out or a digital input. Buttons along the top of the mix surface allow easy soloing of any track, both during record and during playback, and a handy metal scribble strip bracket clips onto the mixer if you need space to write track names. The X3 can record up to four media simultaneously, with individual options for each media in regards to file type or track count. The X3 comes fitted with an internal 256GB SSD as the main drive, and also supports real-time recording to dual SD cards and USB-connected media, even supporting common thumb drives. The ultra-bright swiveling front panel, and no, it's not a touchscreen, provides a large canvas for display information. Like the previous models, the display is mounted on a pair of heavy-duty hinges that allow it to be rotated more than 45 degrees to suit the user's preference. This feature also helps with the issue of sunlight readability by letting you adjust the angle to minimize reflections. Function buttons are arrayed along the front of the recorder, with some providing simple yes-no or up-down left-right navigation, while others are task-specific, like the two dedicated slate PL buttons that allow you to activate private communication lines to two discrete outputs. The F4 through F6 buttons are menu-dependent but with the new display real estate comes the ability to include function hints for the controls relative to what you are doing. Power options for the X3 include support for up to two 14-volt, 3.4-amp-hour SM bus batteries supplied with the X3, of the type made by Inspired Energy in Florida. These advanced smart batteries output extensive telemetry that the X3 can read and display to give you very accurate run times. Two fully charged batteries will give four to five hours of runtime, depending on what features are activated. A machined aluminum two-bank simultaneous charger is included with the package. The charger runs off external 10 to 24 volt from a rear-mounted 4-pin XLR, and the included AC adapter will operate the charger as well as act as a power supply for the Kantar itself. A standard 4-pin XLR DC input is located on the rear of the Kantar and a 4-pin Hiroshi 12-volt DC output is provided to power accessories from the X3. The X3 has 12 analog inputs available on a combination of standard 3-pin and 5-pin XLR connectors located on the center ridge of the recorder. Eight of those inputs are full-featured Lundahl Transformer Balance mic line inputs with 48-volt phantom power, analog limiters, variable low-cut filters, phase reverse, and 3-band digital EQ. The other four analog inputs are fixed at line level. Cable guides are mounted to the rear deck to help manage access to the analog inputs. Eight AES digital inputs with sample rate conversion are provided on a 25-pin D-sub located on the bottom panel. Eight AES outputs are on the same connector, which conforms to the common TASCAM AES pinout configuration. Two AES42 input pairs are present on two TA3 connectors for direct connection to digital microphones with Mode 2 support. The optional Dante interface offers 32 more inputs over CAT6 from devices using the Dante audio protocol from Audinate. 32 Dante outputs are provided as well. There are eight balanced line level outputs located on another 25-pin D-sub located on the left-hand side of the recorder. Again, the Tascam pinout is used. 
A quarter inch headphone jack is located just underneath the front panel. Headphone volume is controlled by pressing the headphone button and rotating one of the jog wheels on the main selector or the monitor crown. Next to the headphone jack, you'll find a 3.5 millimeter jack for an external slate mic. The X3 can provide 2.5 to 4 volt electret power in half volt steps. A built-in slate mic is located on the body of the recorder, just to the right of the display. The options port allows for users of the current Canarem controller to interface with the X3, and future accessories are planned for a later date. HDSDI video input and DVI video output connectors are located on the rear of the recorder and are reserved for future implementation. Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth functionality are being reserved for future app and PC-based applications. Updated versions of Atom's Tarkan, Majax, and Arcan are in the works for release later in the year. The primary menu access point is through the X3's main selector. Identical to the selector on previous model, except for the fact that it now uses magnetic positional switches instead of rotating PCBs and contacts for maintenance-free operation, the main selector handles everything from basic transport control to menu access to parameter adjustments. The stop position is the starting point. The Kantar can be turned on with the selector in any position, but it can only be turned off while in the stop position using a double confirmation process. While in stop, pressing the F5 button will bring up a status report of all internal boards and media to ensure that everything is operating correctly. In the stop position, all inputs and outputs are muted. In the test position, all inputs and outputs become active. You can make adjustments to input parameters, change input or output routing presets, and select your headphone monitor source. You will also now see the status of all active media. Icons in blue indicate that the media is online, and the green check mark reminds you which drives are selected to record audio. The available record time is displayed, and always represents the time remaining on the media with the least amount of time left. Battery percentage and exact runtime are calculated from the SM bus and displayed, as is the status of the external DC port. You have shortcut access to adjusting line outputs as well as a visible display of the gain position of any other rotary microphone potentiometers. The bright meter section always shows the amount of tracks you currently have activated, and will expand or contract automatically depending on track count. Each bar meter features track name overlays, input sources on the bottom, and output fader position on the top along with peak indication and limiting activity. Each meter is color coded based on its type. Mixed down tracks are one color while ISO tracks are another. The meters are also extremely customizable with personal settings for reference level indication, grid marks or gradient slopes, and personal adjustments for the points at which the meters turn from green to yellow to red among other settings. In the PPR position or pre-post record, your pre-record buffer becomes active and you have direct access to metadata entry and editing of the previous or next take. A false start function is available here by pressing the shift and escape keys where deleted files are moved to the trash folder for temporary storage and your take number is automatically reset. The record position is straight up and well it goes into record. There's a bump stop at the top of the selector dial preventing you from going any further clockwise and that gives you a tactile confirmation that you're in the record position even if you're not looking at the recorder at all. Going back counterclockwise, the first position past stop is the play position. Rotating to play will queue up the last file you recorded. You can select other files to play by using the left-right buttons, and the OK and Escape buttons act as play, pause, and stop, respectively. One new feature of the X3 is that, while in playback, a visual representation of the audio waveform is displayed on the bottom of the screen. Using the jog wheel, you can scroll forward or back within the window with a positional marker representing the playhead. Park it where you want, and the X3 will play back from there. Press the solo button above any of the 10 magnetic faders to solo that track during playback. The next position down is the media browser. In this menu, you can navigate the directory structures of any attached media to select files for playback, edit metadata, or even delete unwanted files. To select a file for playback here, just highlight it and rotate the main selector back to the play position. The output menu lets you select sources to route to the headphones, line outs, and AES outputs. In all three cases, the X3 allows assignment of any track, input, or internal mix bus to any output. The headphone outmap page allows quick assignment of sources to the left, right, or center of the stereo feed. Headphone monitor choices can be saved as custom presets and can be given unique names by the user for easy identification. 
The line out and AES output screens let you quickly choose any track, input, or bus for each channel. In addition, either of the two dedicated talkback circuits can be assigned to individual or multiple output configurations. These configurations, like the headphone ones, can be saved and named for quick recall. The InGrids menu allows you to quickly route any input or any of the two internal mix buses to any of the available 24 tracks. Your routing choices can be saved and given appropriate names and can be recalled instantly while in the test or PPR positions. Track numbers are listed along the top of the grid and eight rows of input banks are represented in the grids below. Simply rotate the jog wheel or press the up, down, left, right buttons to select an input bank. Press the OK button and you can choose from any of the available inputs to route to that track. The bottom row L, C, and R indicators represent how that track is routed to the stereo bus. The audio menu contains settings for sample and bit rates, Dante power, and other relevant items including Atom's patented auto slate function, where the X3 can detect the clap of a slate and mark that moment in both the audio metadata and the PDF sound report. The technical menu contains basic machine settings and personal preferences. The session menu is where you choose or edit recording projects, decide what kind of files will go to what media, mount and format media, and set up the header for the PDF sound report and ALE files that are automatically generated by the X3. You have the options of recording monophonic or polyphonic broadcast WAV files, as well as options for only sending mix files to certain media, with an additional feature of recording those mix files as fully uncompressed quality or as MP3 files with varying bit rates. Finally, the copy backup menu of the X3 is wholly new. Since the X3 writes natively to all media in real time, all of the somewhat convoluted backup processes found in the previous model's menu have been streamlined and improved. The X3 allows for copying of any file, individually or in a group, to and from any attached media. While you're copying files, you also have the option of interleaving monophonic files as polyphonic while they're transferred to the target. This process is done during the transfer, so files do not need to be bounced to the internal drive before copying. At 15,000 euros, there are certainly more economical options when it comes to purchasing a new recorder. So what are you really getting for that money? Well, you're getting a recorder that can meet the demands of just about any modern workflow. A recorder that excels in cart-based applications and can be easily taken off into the field. You're getting Atom's unrivaled build quality, ergonomics, resistance to the elements, and their commitment to providing you the features that they've promised. Atom wants to sell you a professional tool like the X1 and X2 that will be as relevant and useful to you 10 years from now as the day you bought it. Now, there are some things still not functioning on the X3. The Bluetooth and Wi-Fi apps have not been finalized. There's an options port with no real options yet. The video capabilities are unknown, at least to me, but Atom's initial focus is delivering the X3 with the ability to record, playback, and deliver production audio. And in their words, the fun stuff will come later. As these features are released, We'll update with new videos to address these topics as the X3's full functionality comes online. If you have any questions about the X3, give us a call at 1-800-228-4429 or visit us on the web at locationsound.com. Thanks for watching.